Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will take a look at Big Tree Tech's new SKR Mini E3 version 3. This is a drop-in upgrade for Creality's older generation printers such as the Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, Ender 5, Ender 5 Pro, and the CR10. For new generation printers like the Ender 3 V2, Ender 3 S1, and the CR6 SE, the board does not support stock touch screens and only supports stock LCD screens or Big Tree Tech's own touch screen. Moreover, new generation printers use an integrated ribbon cable, which makes changing the motherboard very difficult as you have to rewire all the wires in order to get rid of the ribbon cable. Also, new printers have silent stepper drivers, a color screen, and a bed leveling sensor, and you may not need this upgrade. Like the previous versions of the Mini E3 version 2, it's a 32-bit board with TMC2209 silent stepper drivers. There are a few improvements in this latest version. 1. It came with the new Cortex M0 Plus 32-bit processor, which is the most energy-efficient ARM processor available. The speed is slightly slower, and it runs at 64 MHz, while the old version 2 uses an M3 processor running at 72 MHz. But a few MHz slower is no difference at all when using to control a 3D printer. 2. The heatsink of the stepper drivers is redesigned. It uses a one-piece heatsink that is fixed on the board, which is unlike the previous version, which was a blue aluminum heatsink taped on each stepper driver. It falls off easily when you need to reconnect some cables in the tight electronic enclosure. 3. An additional fan port was added, so we can connect the hot end heatsink fan to this port. This means the fan doesn't have to stay on all the time. There are other minor upgrades like an onboard 5 volt power supply, a redesigned layout to increase the distance between stepper drivers, and other components. I will install this board on my Ender 3 Pro and see what I have to do to make it work. If you are not familiar with the wiring of a 3D printer motherboard, I suggest that you take a few pictures from different angles of the stock motherboard just in case you want to switch back if anything goes wrong. I will remove the motherboard from the bottom of the printer so it will be easier to show on camera. First, I will remove all stepper motor cables, the X, Y, C, and extruder, followed by the BL Touch, thermistor for the heat bed and the hot end, limit switches, and fans. Okay, all JST connectors are removed. We still have four sets of wires connected to the screw terminals. I will remove them one by one, starting with the power supply wires, the enclosure fan wires, the heated bed wires, and finally the hot end wires. As you can see, they are just bare wire with tin, so I will add ferrules to them before connecting them to the new motherboard. For the hot end heatsink fan, it was connected to the screw terminal and it always stayed on. For the new motherboard, we have an extra fan port that can be controlled by the firmware. So, I will clamp a JST connector on these two wires. Okay, now we can connect the wires to the new board starting with the power supply. I use the red arrow for hot wire and black for the ground on the board layout diagram. Try to pull them and make sure they are secure. For the heated bed, the ground is on the right and the hot wire is on the left. For the hot end, it doesn't matter, and just making sure all the wires are secure will be fine. I will now connect the thermistors. There are two of them, the heated bed and the hot end. I don't have a Z-limit switch as I use the 5-pin BL touch for homing. I will connect the Y-limit switch and the X-limit switch. For the fan zero port, we will connect it with a part cooling fan and the wire colors are blue and yellow. For the fan 2 port, we will connect it with the hot end heatsink fan. For the fan 1 port, we will connect the electronic enclosure cooling fan to cool the motherboard and the stepper drivers. Then, connect all the stepper motors, X, Y, and Z. It won't make any difference which Z connector you use on the board, as they are controlled by the same stepper driver. The last stepper motor would be for the extruder. For the BL Touch, since we connected this 5 pin to the probe connector on the stock motherboard, we will do the same first. Then, the stock LCD screen ribbon cable. 
I will start with the stock screen and install the 3.5 inch TFT later. Finally, if you have a filament sensor and use the stock LCD screen, we will also connect it to the motherboard. If you use the TFT touchscreen, we will connect to the screen instead. I will leave the motherboard outside and do some simple tests to make sure everything is working before I mount it back at the bottom of the printer. I will move the heated bed and the x-axis to make sure the cable doesn't get in the way. Now, let's turn on the printer and see if it works. Okay, the Marlin screen is showing. The board came with the pre-compiled firmware for the stock Ender 3 and we will try to do auto home first. The X and Y are all moving to the right direction, but the Z is moving up a little bit and then stops. The reason is the stock Ender 3 is using a Z-limit switch and no BL touch, so this firmware may not work for my setup. To confirm that, I will switch off the printer and connect a limit switch, so let's try Auto Home again. This time, I will manually press on the limit switch to simulate the stock Ender 3. Once the nozzle gets close to the bed, I will press it once. It moves up slowly and tries to move down, so I press it again. This is how the stock Ender 3 homes with the limit switch. Since I'm using a BL touch, the limit switch is not necessary. I will remove it and try to load another firmware that supports the BL touch. Let's go to Big Tree Tech's GitHub page. The first one is the SKR Mini E3 motherboard. Download all the code and see if the firmware we need is included. After the download is complete, unzip all files. Go to the firmware folder, v3.0, Marlin, and they have pre-compiled three different versions for both the Ender 3 and the Ender 5. The first one is for the stock Ender 3, which came with the board. I will try the third one, which is the Ender 3 BL Touch for Z Homing. Copy this to the SD card and make sure to rename it to firmware.bin, otherwise the bootloader won't upload it to the board. Insert the SD card and turn on the printer. Let's try Auto Home again, and this time it moves to the center of the bed. The CR Touch is working, but it didn't come down to probe the bed. It seems this firmware is also not for our setup. So I tried the last one, which is the Ender 3 BL Touch firmware. Copy to the SD card, rename it, and upload it to the printer. Try Auto Home again, and it's doing the exact same as the one for the stock Ender 3. I know what's going on now, so let's talk more about how to fix it. Besides the stock Ender 3 with no BL Touch, we actually have three different ways to connect a BL Touch. The first way is how I connect it right now. I use all five pins from the BL Touch and connect to the probe connector on the board. There will be no limit switches, as we also use the BL Touch to probe the bed. I believe this is the most common way to do this for all 32-bit Creality boards. We will also disable the Z end stop in the firmware. The second way is to connect all five pins of the BL Touch to the probe connector, but also use the limit switch and connect it to the Z end stop connector on the board. So, the BL Touch will be used for bed leveling and the limit switch will be used for homing. This is pretty uncommon, so I don't think most people would connect the BL Touch like this. However, the second firmware under 3 BL Touch requires this connection. The third way is to connect three of the five pins of the BL Touch to the probe connector and connect two pins to the Z end stop. This method is commonly used on older 8-bit boards as we don't have a five pin connector on those boards. But since Big Tree Tech has not released the firmware for this V3.0 board yet, I can't disable the Z end stop by editing the firmware code. The easiest way to make this work is to remove two pins from the BL Touch connector and use a JST connector to connect them to the Z end stop. So, I will upload the third firmware, Ender 3 BL Touch for Z Homing to the printer again. Do Auto Home again, and this time it works as expected. It uses the BL Touch to probe the bed for homing, as we use the BL Touch to work as the limit switch. Next, I will connect the TFT color screen. Just connect the five pin connectors of the screen to the TFT port of the motherboard. If you're viewing this from the same angle, the single reset pin should be on the left and the metal pin should face the limit switch and thermistor connectors. Then, connect this cable to the RS232 serial port of the touch screen. Let's turn on the printer with both screens connected. As you can see, they are both working. I will try to home the printer using the touch screen. 
Then I will also use the touch screen to update the E steps and probe offset values as it has a terminal interface to let you enter G code. Enter M92 to view the current step values. The stock under 3 extruder is using 93 steps for the extruder. Since I upgraded the extruder to the My3D OMG extruder, which has a 3 to 1 gear ratio, my stepper motor has also been upgraded to the Aspina pancake motor, which is 0.9 degrees instead of 1.8. This means my E-steps value will be much higher. I will enter M92 E785 to change it, and then M500 to save the values. I will also set the probe offset. Enter M851. The X, Y, and Z values seem good to me. As my previous Z offset is negative 1.8, I will just keep these settings. If you want to use the stock LCD screen, you can still use the menu to change most settings, like the Z offset, as well as the step values. Let's print a simple disk that only takes 10 minutes and make sure everything is working. I also connected the filament sensor to the TFT touchscreen, as I will use it to control the printer. I will remove the stock screen later and just use the touch screen. Okay, it seems fine. Let's put everything back. As I won't use the LCD screen, I will remove the cable. In fact, you can connect this cable to the TFT touch screen as it also supports Marlin simulator mode, but I won't use this feature as I prefer using the terminal to enter G code directly instead of turning the knob and finding what I need. If you think this feature is cool, you can do it but I will just stick with the touch screen. I will close the cover and replace the LCD screen. Since the screw holes of both screens are identical, this should be a very simple swap. Okay, the upgrade is done. Let's start with Auto Home and make sure all the cables are connected and secured. I will print a 3D Benchy from the USB drive. The Benchy is pretty nice, as the My3D OMG extruder works really well on this Ender 3. Besides the Benchy, I will also print something I normally print. These 16 mini discs used up the whole print area, and it took around 3 hours to finish. It seems everything is working fine. After this upgrade, the print quality and the print speed will stay the same, but you do get a silent board and an extra fan port to control the hot end fan. As you can see, the fan is no longer always on when the printer is not printing or heating. Now, it's completely silent. Besides that, you also get some extension ports, so you can connect a touchscreen that supports even more features. You can use a standard size SD card or a USB drive for printing, but it also allows you to connect an ESP8266 Wi-Fi module and use the ESP3D firmware for Wi-Fi printing. I have made another video for this Wi-Fi module using another Big Tree Tech RRF motherboard. The touchscreen also supports this smart filament sensor, which has a wheel inside. It keeps spinning when the filament is feeding, and it's quite useful if your filament breaks between the filament sensor and the extruder for some reason. A regular filament sensor would think the filament feeding is normal, as a piece of filament is inside the sensor and presses down on the switch inside but this smart sensor will trigger the filament runout signal as the wheel inside is not spinning anymore. There are also some extra ports on this motherboard, so you can supply 5V and 3.3V to power up other devices, connect to an auto power off module, and more. I hope you found this video helpful. I put the links of this board, touchscreen, and smart filament sensor under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.